How are y'all doing? Welcome back to the Revenue Clinic broadcast. I'm your host, Tristan Sutton, your marketing strategist. And every week we come to you bringing you uh, this podcast to help you cure your profit ailments or your revenue ailments. So we bring an expert or uh, injury subject matter, matter expert to let you know what it is that you can be doing in your particular business to take things to the next level and generate more revenue. So this week we have none other than Miss Lydia Evans, owner of Swag Essentials. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her because she's more than just a Shark Tank star. Um, she is the boss of all bosses mm -hmm. when it comes to men's skincare. Um, she started her career in the medical spa industry as a highly sought after skincare therapist. She started making soaps for men in her kitchen <laughs> back in 2012. And so she went from a two bedroom apartment to a 3000 square foot warehouse. Wow. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> so now she has uh, patented a three in one loop of soap with 60 natural ingredients. Yes. And we'll talk about that. Okay. I have to change some things, change some things switch it up on you. <laughs> so uh, has a patent and was a guest on Shark Tank around four or five years ago. Uh, it'll be four years on December four 5th. Years. Happy anniversary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I celebrate it too, actually. Awesome. 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 So what we're going to do today is talk to you about how to get your products on Shark Tanks, uh, as well as just in general, even if you don't get a chance to be on the show, how can you take your skincare beauty products to the next level, have a legit business and, and just blossom. So thank you for being here today. Ms. Oh, Lydia. thank you for having me, Tristan. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's been long overdue. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about yourself. You know, where are you from? All that good stuff. Well, um, I am a Houston native. I, um, uh, yep. H town. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I grew up in Sugarland. Um, when I was about 15, okay. my mother ended up uh, moving us out closer to Texas Southern university where she's employed. Okay. Um, and so that kind of changed my dynamic, gave me a little cultural balance there. Mm -hmm. And, um, then I ended up leaving there going off to Hampton university. Hampton. Okay. I am such a mama and daddy's baby. I got homesick, came home, and finished at University of Houston. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. All right. So what did you major in, by the way? I majored. I started out pre-med. Pre-med. Yeah. Isn't it? But I mean, it you makes can't sense, run away though. from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it grossed me out in my sophomore year, mm -hmm. and I changed my major, and I actually lost my full scholarship. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, and I graduated with a degree in advertising public relations. There you go. Total opposite career. It's like... Went from healing people to getting people to buy stuff. <laughs> but it all balances out, guys. Well, amen. Amen. Oh, man. So tell us about what made you go from being an esthetician when they say, you know what? I'm going to make my own products for me. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, journey. I started 12 years ago um, making products for ladies from my home. Okay. I lived out in the Heights at the time. Okay. Um, and I walked away from the job that I was at. Mm -hmm. Well, shall I say I, I, I got I got let go of. Oh, okay. they did. They, it, they was right after the, it was right after that economic break that happened mm -hmm. um, right after 9-11 and all the rest of that good stuff. Gotcha. So the hiring market kind of froze up. The last to be hired was the first to be fired. Mm. Um, and so they ended up giving me a severance package. I used that and flipped that coin, basically. Mm. Um, and I started my brand as Urban Sugar Baby out in my Heights Cottage. Okay. And I was making like lotions and creams and sugar scrubs and oils for ladies. Gotcha. Um, I did that for roughly eight years. Um, and then my brother came along and he started harassing me to... Uh, he's a barber, by the way. Shout out to my brother. Um, he's asked me to make um, product for guys. Okay. I had been catering up until that point to women. Mm, but so skin is skin. Okay. So you learn skin, you learn skin. Everything. Doesn't matter whether it's a male or female. Gotcha. Um, so I kind of knew what I needed to put into the product, but I did not care to market because mm. I didn't under I didn't see that as a marketable um Industry. So you see marketing skincare to guys is profitable? It when I started, no, sir, it was not. <laughs> okay. That the, the way men manscape and um the metrosexuality that's going on now and the men that are really the, about the taking care of themselves, the merces, <laughs> all of that, that was like uh unheard of when I first started doing skincare. Gotcha. Um so yeah. Okay. So that's what swerved it. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So tell us about what made you say, you know what? Starting off with women's products, going to men's, but now you know what? I think this should be on Shark Tank. What was that process like? Oh, <laughs> oh that is my million dollar question. Everyone asks me that, but ironically, I did not care hmm. to be on um Shark Tank at the time that I ended up on Shark Tank. Oh, that's interesting. Because that it's not an easy process to get on there. 
It's an extremely difficult process. Right. You know, they review 40,000 entrepreneurial application submissions. Mm -hmm. That is online and that's also in addition to the casting calls because mm -hmm. when people show up they show up like american idol at these casting calls gotcha. um but when i first saw shark tank mm -hmm. the first season i caught the second episode that was the first time i'd ever saw it mm. at the time i was living at home with my parents um and we were all sitting around the tv and my mom kept saying there's this show that you need to see for entrepreneurs you need mm -hmm. to get on so we're sitting there watching it and i mean tears are coming down my face because i'm thinking what if I could get on that show and it could give me the financial boost I need to take my baby off the wow. off the off the ground? Wow. Um, my mom said, get up and apply. And I said, OK, I ran over to the computer. I went on ABC.com. I filled out an application. Nothing. First mm. season, second episode. Mm. Um, and after that, I kind of thought, oh, what's the odds of me getting on that show? Yeah. I mean, they probably get a lot of applications. I mean, Why I just got a little sugar scrub, a little body butter. Um, <laughs> But I can. I was addicted to that show. Really, I think a lot of entrepreneurs um, got addicted to that show, especially when it first started. Hmm. It was a very unlike any other reality it show. It Really, was very popular. Mm -hmm. Now I heard like that very first season they struggled though. Mm -hmm. But after that, it just took off. Oh yeah, like they <laughs> they they run um, like they get Emmy after Emmy for that show. There, they have like thirteen million viewers at this point. Million My million season viewers. was ten million viewers. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's not bad. That's We're not gonna bad. talk about the. Uh, the Shark Tank Gold Diggers. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, oh, we don't want to talk about that. Okay. Oh, I don't mind. We can talk about everything up in here. In the revenue going. <laughs> so we were on what season? The four? Six. Six seasons. Season six. Season six. Episode okay. 13. Episode 13. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, what was the process? You got at, you sent your application in several times. I sent my application in one time. One time. Online. ABC.com. Right. Did not get a response. That was the first season. First season. Um, during season five, one of my dear friends came to me. I was at the point where I want to give up on my business. Mm. I decided to get more on the service side and stop doing the product side because it's very hard. Yeah. Very to, I mean, yeah, it is. It, it is to, for you to see a serious profit where you can really take care of yourself, take care of your family, build, grow. Um, but I have this expertise in skincare because I am a medical esthetician. So I can always go back to the service side of things. Gotcha. So I decided I want to go back to the service side of things because that's a what? Guaranteed check. Exactly. It's your safe place. It's a very safe place. Because it's, it's rough out here in these entrepreneurial streets. It's rough in these streets. <laughs> 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 so um, I decided that I wanted to um, go ahead and do that. And I had told my girlfriend that I was going to defunct my business mm. and just be a full time esthetician okay. because I was really, really good at it. Nice. Um, and so she, you know, she heard the pain in my voice and she was like, Lydia, you really don't want to do this. You know, you're speaking from emotion. You're, you know, you got to push through it. Well, I mean, she's saying that, but she's in a, in, in my opinion, in a cake job <laughs> at a get oil and gas company making yeah. cake money. So exactly. yeah, you can say that. With that but, guaranteed check. You know, as an entrepreneur, you don't go out into the jungle and kill. You don't eat. Exactly. You know, and, um, and then at that point, even still, you can only eat what's available. Absolutely. So, um, she said, she called, we hung up the phone. She said, I'm going to pray about this, friend, because I don't think this is really what you want to do. I think you're just letting life get the best of you. And um, she called me back like a day later. And she said, oh, my God, friend, I got it. Girl, Shark Tank's going to be in Austin. Ooh. And I'm going to hold the phone like, what they got yeah, well, you know, to do who cares? with me? I'm in Houston. <laughs> Some sugar screw. I'm, 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 I'm bringing it down a notch. What are you talking? Right, what does right. that have to do with anything? Because that sounds a lot like business. Exactly. And so she was like, "Well, I think it'd be a great idea." Hmm. What, what, what am I gonna pitch? Mm. Your products. <laughs> I already submitted an application online. Mm. They never got back to me. Mm. She was like, "But that was that was like four or five seasons ago." <laughs> but I was at the point of yeah, no. Just, I'm, I'm done. done. I don't want any other options. You know how they say your breakthrough comes through when yeah. you're done? Yeah. Um, and so she was like, Lydia, I just think you need to pitch. Hmm. When is it? She says, Tuesday. Well, when I was talking to her, that was a Friday. Hmm. So I said, Tuesday in Austin, you want me to go pitch my product line. That's short notice. To Shark Tank. <laughs> and I'm already ready to throw in the time. Girl, you get off my phone. Get off my phone. So then she says, Lydia... <laughs> 
um, let's do it. I said, I don't want to spend the money. I don't want to pay for the gas. I don't want to do any of that because I'm deciding. You were that done. Yeah, I was that done. Wow. I was like, nope, nope, that's it. She said, I tell you what, I believe in it so much. Why don't you pitch that bar of soap you have? Hmm. Because that's an invention. Right. Now, there's a million sugar scrubs. There's a million body butters. There's one swag bar. I hung up on her. You I was like, yes. Yeah. So I was like, girl, get off my phone. You steady trying to see. You know how your friends do. Trying to convince gas you up, when you get gas yeah. up. <laughs> I was like, girl, get off my phone. I'm trying to figure this thing out. So neither here nor there. Let's fast forward that. Um, she calls me back on Sunday and she begs me and says, Lydia, I, something in me feels like this is a good moment for you. Wow. I just feel like you're at the point of no return. Yeah. I feel like you've hit this breaking point and that's when God pushes you over. I just feel it, Lydia. She was like, if I drive and I get the hotel, mm. please, will you go? Now that's a friend. That's right a friend. There. That's a friend. right? That's there. a good friend. <laughs> Shout out to my friend. So, um, so, um, so and I said, you know what? That's fine. She said, but if you make it, you better give me my money. <laughs> Run me my cold. No, that's it. <laughs> and so um, I said, okay, yeah, no problem. So then um, I'm starting to get ready and everything. Then all of a sudden she calls me right back and she says, Lydia, I think I got you hooked up with a private casting. Whoa. How? Whoa. I was like, whoa, God. You're working harder than you right now. Yeah. No, that's it. I was <laughs> yeah. over it. Yeah. I was over it. I'm, I was over it, Tristan. I was like, I was over it. I was over the the popularity contest. Yeah. I was over the inner circles in the city. I was over all of that. All oh, the clicks. By that's another meeting. Oh, that's another another meeting. time. We got to go talk about you, the boss you, clicks. No. The <laughs> <laughs> um. So um. Neither here nor there. Um. I I said okay. I said well, what's the private casting? Mm -hmm. She said well, you don't have to stand in line because I I don't like standing in lines. I've never liked to stand in line. Okay. Never have. I think that is a very entrepreneurial quality. As a matter of fact, most entrepreneurs I know that are very have a boss mentality. We wait for no one. We get it done. We don't wait in line. We don't wait for handouts. Um, and I just couldn't see myself standing in this American style line in Austin, wrapped around the dome, waiting for someone to validate my baby. Absolutely. So she called me back and she says. I got you one at the Greater Austin Chamber. Wow. They're having a private casting um, for minorities, but they're only accepting a small amount of people. I called. They said they're about to close registration at noon, and I'm going to hit and sign me and you up. And I said, okay, cool. I'd much rather go to that. She says, but the catch is we got to be there tomorrow. I said, what? <laughs> See? Friend doing the most, but in your favor. <laughs> Why is she a real one? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she must be from Maker's Homes. Um, out that way. Oh, well, that's funny. Ain't that funny? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then that's how that went. And I ended up rolling down there. I did not have a pitch put together. I, I was rehearsing in the car for those about three hours to get to Austin from Houston. Um, and I just looked at her and I was like, I can't come up with a pitch. It's just not me. It's not my style. Huh. Uh, the way I move, the way I flow. I just couldn't come up with this regimented high. Oh, high. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Never been that way. Okay. I've always colored outside the lines. And for my people that color outside the lines, you keep coloring outside the lines because it will pay off. Amen. So um, <laughs> I she, I said, I said, I, I can't come up with a pitch. She said, well, I'll tell you what, speak from your heart. Hmm. Amen. Just they give you two minutes. Just say whatever you can say for two minutes yes. from your heart. Yes. So when I walk in there, I mean, these is primarily guys, of course, primarily men. Um, most of the people were minority like me. Okay. Um, and when they walked in, I mean, I'm sorry, when I walked in, I, I had my soap in my purse. Okay. okay. And I'm walking in, I'm seeing people with PowerPoint presentations. And I mean, like trifold. What? So I'm talking about money vested. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. So I immediately felt uncomfortable gotcha. and out of place and unprepared. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, I thought we were just doing a soft pitch here. I didn't know. Uh, they doing the pitch pitch. They were like, this is your <laughs> one shot. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, you doing it online. Yes, they review those. Mm -hmm. But this is your one shot to get in front of the casting producers. Right. So I'm sitting here just watching person after person in front of me with their very intricate displays, their suits and ties. And I'm looking like a beauty pageant queen <laughs> with a ball of soap in my purse, you know, and no pitch. No pitch. No pitch. So faith. All kinds of faith. Amen. <laughs> I've gotten so far on faith. Indeed. Um, and I walked to the front. I almost froze. Hmm. 
And I something in, when it comes to business, I think most people that know me know this. I'm an extremely introverted person. Really? Extremely introverted. You can't tell. Unless it's about business. Gotcha. So that's when you come alive. Yeah. It's just like musicians. They had most of them are most artists are very, very introverted. Very much so. Most uh, entrepreneurs, if you scratch them at their surface, they're very reclusive people. Mm-hmm. But they understand that there's power in word and they have to network. They have to communicate. Absolutely. When you start talking about skincare, I light up. I illuminate and I start I start just spitting out all this knowledge. Gotcha. And so I was my legs were shaking and they were just smiling like, OK, go. And they had the recording. And I was like. I don't have a pitch. And they said, what? You don't have a pitch. I was like, I don't, I don't have a pitch. Wow. But I have a really kick ass bar of soap. And the woman smiled and said, well, show me what you got. And I said, oh, right, right. So I dig in my purse and I pull out this bar of soap out of my purse. Stuff is falling out of my purse. Oh my God, I Sugar little gloss all over the place. Baby. <laughs> I, line on, I was like, oh my God. And I was like, oh, here you go. So I set it on the table. And I just started going off at the mouth about it. Because as soon as I saw my baby Mm. in the hand of that casting producer, it became very real. Right. It was like, oh, no, I have a real chance here. Absolutely. And I was speaking to my bar. I I, I wasn't even really talking to the lady at that point. I was like, and it's three in one. And I made it with my own recipe. And it's like my baby. And she said, you really love this product. And she said, it's so cool looking. It's like, it looks like you can eat it. So she's looking at it and staring at it and moving it all around. Um, And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is what I brought here. I was like, I don't have a fancy presentation. I don't have a fancy pitch that I have rehearsed. I just found out about you guys, me being here 24 hours ago. And I said, but I have football players that use my product. I have athletes. I have coaches for Uh, national football teams Mm -hmm. that use my product um, that will vouch for me. So she said, if you can really get some people to vouch for you, um, because you can't just say that. Yeah. And then come time, you don't have proof because if you get on the show, you got to be able to put your money where your mouth is. Got to have your receipts. And I said, I got all the receipts. So (laughs) immediately when I walked out of there, I started texting coaches and and players and saying, hey, guys, uh, I might have to put you on a confidentiality agreement, but I just made the biggest move of my life and I might need you to do a uh, recommendation awesome. for me. Yeah. Awesome. Look at guys. Yeah. So if y'all just tuning yeah. in, we got Miss Lydia Evans yeah. over here telling us her miraculous story on how she got on Shark Tank where she didn't want to be on there. <laughs> Friend had to drag her there on a one what, one two day notice. Yes. Didn't have a pitch, didn't have a fancy <sighs> presentation, but spoke her passion, spoke her heart, knew her numbers, and was able to get in front of the casting crew to get on one of the most popular shows in the world right now. Yes. Amen. So Amen. if you're at a point where you're like, I want to give up, I don't really know if I want to take it to the next level. That's that breaking point that she was talking about. Mm-hmm. And you can push through that and God may have something for you on that other side. If you just keep on walking, keep on going through. So yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. So you get casted, you get your receipts. Yep. Now it's time to go on the show. Tell us what that's like. Oh, Lord. oh, oh Lord. God, it's such an arduous. It makes my stomach hurt already. <laughs> Anxiety and bubble guts. Oh, no. Jesus. <laughs> Woo. Um, so it, it's it's an arduous process. Very much. So. It's not like you're just you can't you you pitch and then all of a sudden you're on Shark Tank the next day. It doesn't mm. look like that. Okay. Um it it went over a process of months. Okay. Um, it's extremely time consuming. Uh, Definitely not for the weak at heart. Mm. Um, started out with a few people and we kept up with each other along the way. And there were people that literally forfeited and were like, they're asking for too much. They want too much proof. They want too much this. Well, if what you have said yeah. is true, true, you shouldn't have a problem backing that up. Nice. I did not fluff my numbers. I went on there with a measly 54 grand. I was like, and I, because to me, that was a big deal. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to get those many people that's to a, buy fifteen dollar bars of soap that they've never heard of and no celebrity is tied to. That's a lot of wax and loofahs, <laughs> man. Because <laughs> she has her uh, loofah infusion in her soap. So yep. Imagine mm-hmm. selling fifty four thousand of that yeah. in one year. Yeah. <laughs> so and it, yeah, because that was just the soap. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't easy. Right. There's a lot of education behind it, and then you're bringing you're the first to bring it to market. Absolutely. That makes a huge difference Absolutely. because you have no cookie cutter ahead of you that's yeah. saying, oh yeah, so that's like. So no one's blazed a path. Nope. I think that when I saw the episode, that was the challenge uh-huh. for most of the sharks. They were like, it's not a proven concept. Mm-hmm. 
So if you have a concept out there, just because it's not proven doesn't mean you can't go forward with it and take it to something else. So that mm -hmm. is why we have on the show. But keep going with that. Um, and so, um, I mean, during that process, you're like this with your producers. Um, they're learning you, they're observing you, they're paying attention to you. Um, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. You are literally building a friendship with these people because at any point through the rounds, you go through round after round after round after round after round after round after round. After round. At any point, they could say, oh, thanks, but no thanks. Wow. Oh, yeah. It, it's cut it's deep. Rope. <laughs> it's cutthroat. This cutthroat. So it's it, it, it. There's a lot of reasons why I am the way I am today. Gotcha. Because th this didn't come easy or lightly. It wasn't like I'm. And and it's not a. It's not um scripted. It's not a show that is um all about whose boyfriend is talking to who. Who mm. got the beat most beat face? It's not about that. It's about what you can bring. It's to about the table. what right up in here. Yeah. And that's something that as a woman, and I know there's a lot of other female entrepreneurs out there, mm -hmm. I've always prided myself mm -hmm. in using what's between here mm, to get myself to the next level. That's always been a big deal for me. Absolutely. And I'm even more confident now after looking at what I've accomplished to be able to say, yeah, and stand firm in it. Like I used what was between my ears. Right. This was a walk between me and God alone. Mm. Um, and my friend was a vessel to kind of push me, of course. We appreciate you, friend. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> you, friend. I need more friends like that. Yeah. Tell them I got applications. Right? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So on the show, yes. in front of all these people that are standing down in the hot lights, tell us what that experience is like. Oh, Karen said, oh, Brian. <laughs> yeah, we got a shout out, Karen. Hey. Thank you, boo. Um, okay. I'm sorry. What, <laughs> entrepreneurs also have ADD. What were we saying? Yes, we very do. Um, you're in front of the spotlight. Sharks are staring at you grilling. Yes. Tell us about that experience. Oh, Jesus. Because you looked excited when I saw the episode. I, I mean, because what else can you look like? Right. The first time you see them is when they see you. They don't allow you to kind of ice break beforehand. Yeah, gotcha. um, so when you walk out there, you have to literally stand for right at about 60 seconds while the camera pans across you. Mm -hmm. And the sharks are staring at you so intently and at your table trying to figure out what is this person about to present to me? Gotcha. Because they don't know anything in advance either. Gotcha. Um, and one thing that has gotten me far in my life is smiling. Indeed. Maybe I'll smile through anything. <laughs> Just. So um, I smiled because what else could I do? Yeah. I wasn't going to show a tear. I was not going to pull that move. Um, they weren't going to send me shaking because I feel like after what all I went through in the rounds I want, went through to get there, right. what's the worst you can say but no? Exactly. And I heard that a million times before. And close my mouth, don't get fed. <laughs> mm -mm. So I was smiling. I was happy. I was excited. But the very thing that went through my mind was, oh, my God, I can not believe I'm standing in front of. I mean, and it was just it, it was it was surreal. Yeah. It was so surreal. And then my legs started shaking and my knees almost went out because I locked my legs. And they said they tell you don't lock, don't your, lock legs your legs because people faint. Yeah. They faint. Some people get deals and they don't even show because they faint. Yes, it's all kinds of stuff about that show. People, people uh, faint, they pass out, they urinate on themselves from oh, nerves. Oh my bad. God, yes. That's, now that is a good segue real quick to talk about some Shark, shark Tank facts real quick. Yes. Um, it is harder to get on Shark Tank than it is to get into Harvard. Only 1% of the applicants make it. Each pitch is approximately one hour long, mm -hmm. but they edit it down to 10 minutes just yep. for the show. Um, sharks back out of a lot of deals after taking a deeper look into it. So that's why she said it's important to tell your truth and have your receipts. Because if you mm -hmm. go up there saying you're making 54000 mm -hmm. but only making 5400 they will rescind that offer. And now you did all this for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the fact that the shows last 12 hours a day mm -hmm. and they shoot 10 straight days. So if those sharks look unhappy sometimes because mm -hmm. they've been there all day, all day. hearing these hour long pitches. Mm -hmm. Most of them, they probably don't even. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we'll talk about the last Shark Tank back, which is Shark Tank Gold Diggers at the end. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> okay, but now back to where you were, because I want them to give some context. Some context. Um, so, so I'm there. I begin my pitching, um, and I do what I feel I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I pitch from my heart. Yeah. Um, I'm 
very transparent, very honest, because I feel like at the end of the day, I'd rather you know up front than to catch me in a lie and I get embarrassed later. Exactly. Um, piggybacking off of what you said, uh, only about 30 percent of the deals that you even see go through on TV actually go through. That's another fun fact most people Whoa. don't know. OK, people. So one of my questions that I almost ugh, dislike the most is when people say, oh, my God, you're on Shark Tank. Did you get a deal? And then they <laughs> validate my brand and who I am based on whether I got a deal or not. Gotcha. Yeah, it's kind of like I, oh, likes like on that. Instagram and stuff like that. Any of that. Well, <laughs> well let me tell you where I messed up. Okay. I didn't even have an Instagram when I aired on Shark Tank. Oh, come on now. Nope. As a social media marketing editor, I found out one hurts. week before I aired, and the only thing I could do was make product. I couldn't I couldn't focus on social media. I couldn't focus on anything. Gotcha. You don't know if you're going to air until they call you. Gotcha. They called me on Black Friday and said, hi, Lydia, it's XYZ. I'm giving you a call. You're going to air next Friday. Good luck. Click. And that's it. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> now what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then first thing a girl's going to do if you have a, your parents in their living is call your mama. Damn. And I call my mama and I just start crying. I said, mama. I couldn't even speak. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was sitting in my car. I know exactly where I was. I was out, petty spa. Um, trying to make myself feel good. Gotcha. And let me tell you why. Okay. You do all that taping in the summer. Mm -hmm. They tell you, we call you, we call you, we don't, we don't. That's it. Don't call us, don't ask us nothing, don't email us anything. We call you, you're going to air. You have to understand, of the 40,000 people that they review, mm -hmm. they bring out 134 to 136. Of that 134 to 136, only 124 are going to air. Because that's what the network will pick up. If they pick up more, they might pick up 126 entrepreneurs. That is Maybe. amazing. So the fact that I didn't get a deal, and I knew that summer that I didn't get a deal, and I left there, and it's, you know, the waiting game. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even get a deal. They're yeah. probably not going to air me. I did all that for nothing. I mean, yeah. I lost sales. I lost money. Yeah. Because you're in a very intimate relationship with these producers. Right. You talk to them hours a week. Like, y'all are best friends. And then the rest of the time you're spending getting documents, tax papers together, uh, profit loss statements, balance sheets, um, uh, proposals. I mean, you're getting everything. And then they're constantly asking you for product. You have to ship boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes. For and boxes. free. For free. It's for free unless you get on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, amen. <laughs> well, amen. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, All right, so keep going. So, so <laughs> Tristan, he wasn't ready for me, wasn't guys. Ready. He wasn't ready. I don't think they were either. But to keep keep it going. They're loving it. They're loving it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. So then let let's keep moving that um forward. Okay. I I pitch myself to the sharks, and one thing that I do feel like was what helped me mm -hmm. was the fact that every single shark loved my personality. They did. They did. There was no faltering on. No, you're going to go fall harder yeah. to the point where three of them was like, you don't really even need me. Mm -hmm. I think they know financially I could have used them, but I think that there was the, 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 that quality in me that's, they saw that drive right. and they knew what Shark Tank would do for me Absolutely. The, if I aired. Right. I that's didn't understand key. that. I heard about the Shark Tank effect. I heard about, oh, your business is still going to get some publicity. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing like living it. Okay. So that's a great transition. Yeah. Got through the show. She asked for Damon John's number. No, no, no. I'm clear the record. See, I'm glad I'm on here, y'all. Are y'all ready for this? I can clear the air. Go ahead. I normally don't clear the air. I do, you know, I do a, a whole lot of interviews and I generally kind of curve around questions yeah. and oh, you I gotta answer for me. Oh, honey, I got to do it. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. All right. Okay. I did not ask Damon John for his number. When I first came out, there was very rarely any African-American women that you would even see on that show. I was one of probably three up until that year that had been on that show. Yeah. The only one that had ever come on that show completely single without a child or mm. a husband mm. or a business partner. Oh, wow. Okay? okay. So when I walked out, I noticed that it kind of caught him off guard yeah. when he looked up because he was like, but I think that was because he was like, wait a minute. Is that, a, is that a whole black woman? Is that a whole, is is that that a, a whole is that, black woman? Is that a sister sister? No, it's not a whole sister. So um, I think when he first saw that, and then and immediately Mark started elbowing him like, oh, my God, look at this. And he was like, oh, look. So then he begins to ask me questions. And he says, 
Um, and you make, and he stopped and he says, wait a minute, are you single? Uh-huh. <laughs> and I was. So I said, I mean, it depends on who asked. I mean, don't shoot your shot. Now I knew at the time that that was an extremely married man. Oh, I wasn't okay. interested in Damon John. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, and so then I said, that's why I said, who I mean, you got some single friends. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause I had already <laughs> researched them. I wasn't crazy. I was gonna make myself to look yeah. like a Jezebel on national TV now. <laughs> um and so then I said, uh, do you have some single friends? And then he was like, well, you know, I might be single, you know, in the future. I didn't know at the time he was going through a divorce. So then he was like, well, I'll give you my number if I'm ever single. And I was like, oh, God, I like long romantic walks to the bank. Like, That's you're not right. ready for me. <laughs> you are so not ready for me, Damon. But hey. Yeah. And then when I did my my update story, because they yeah. gave me an update. Um, when they gave me the update story, the producer kept pressing me to say, at the end and um, call me Damon. And I went back and forth with him forever. And I was like, please, I don't want to say that. No, because how much, how much everybody, I mean, right after Shark Tank, everybody was like, are you and Damon talking? Are you and Damon going out? Wow. Did he ever call? What? Did he ever call you? Did he ever? Uh, so you got to ask the question. Did y'all ever See, talk? this is what I'm talking about. No, Damon, John, and I have never dated at all. Thank you. I cleared the air, Damon. <laughs> at Damon, John, Shark. <laughs> so no, we have never dated. Um, uh, dating has always been very difficult yeah. for me because I'm a, uh, I'm a serial businesswoman. And it's like when I get in business, I really don't see anything else. My girlfriends say men hit on me all the time, but I don't see it because I'm like, yeah, but about this soap ball. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Okay. points>. okay. <laughs> so you mentioned something. You mentioned the Shark Tank effect. So you got yes. on the show. You pulled Damon's number. I'm just playing. See? Um, <laughs> no, that's what I'm talking about. See? You, you got off the show. You didn't get the deal at that moment. Mm -hmm. But there's something called the Shark Tank effect. Mm -hmm. Let's break that down. Because oh. uh, it's been exciting for you, I'm sure. It has been extremely exciting. It's something that's going to follow my business in perpetuity. Um, you know, you sign paperwork basically saying that you understand that your brand will be in perpetuity a part of Shark Tank. So in other words, if you decide to go out of business tomorrow, you can't call them and say, pull my episode so people can stop contacting me about this product. Gotcha. Yeah. So the, it, it has its good points, but it has its other sides. It's like, yeah, but as entrepreneurs, we're very fluid. Yeah. You know, we start a certain way. You don't know how that story is going to end. Even right. if you think you know how that story is going to end, you don't know how that story is going to end. Um, so you do sign paperwork that actually says that you do understand that. Um, and so, you know, I signed that paperwork and I remember when I signed it, I thought, oh my God, this is amazing. Until I started feeling here recently, there's other things I want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to ever give up my baby now, but I'm just saying, I'm like, so I'm going to be forever tied to this. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is that we are one of the most aired and re-aired businesses that never got a deal um, because of the popularity of the episode. And it was also because it was the largest deal ever given in that episode, which was a $2 million um, a two million dollar investment. Gotcha. To the gentleman that had the wine. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not, so not, we a bad, a lot. not a bad person to be in, in the air with. <laughs> not at all. And so the Shark Tank effect is a, is a different beast. When that lady called me that Friday and said, "I have seven days um, to basically," or well, she didn't even say I had seven days. She just said, "Good luck." Um, <laughs> um, it, I had seven days from that Black Friday until December fifth to try to orchestrate up some um, inventory. Mm. I had a hundred soap bars in my second bedroom closet, but I did not know what all I would do. Right. I didn't, because you, you can't know what you don't know. Exactly. What I did know, the public couldn't know, which was I did not get a deal. Right. And I was extremely quiet about that because you're under a 46 page contract um, that, that no one can know that. <laughs> um, and so um, I couldn't really talk about anything, but then I also was like, I knew I got it. I, I was on there, but I also didn't know. I knew I didn't get one, right? And I didn't know how that would affect my sales. Gotcha. So it was a very difficult thing to gauge. Yeah, yeah, hard. Yeah, it's a different thing if you were on there, you get the sharks and all the rest of that, and everybody, because most people are caught up in that hype more than they're caught up in your product. Really? Oh yes, because people have a favorite shark. Exactly. When they watch that show, they have a favorite player on exactly. there. You understand? Exactly. So. Um, if you don't get one of the favorite players to to confirm and validate your brand, I did not know. Hmm. I didn't know. So I didn't know what to prepare for. So my mom was like, baby, you know, I can help you out, you know, slide you a little something. 
you need a little help? Shout and she out says, to mama. Shout out to mama. Mama <laughs> sitting right over there, just a real G. So um, I uh, went through that process of trying to figure out, I don't know, should I maybe make a thousand units? Right. I have all this. Should I just wait until it hits and then see what it does? Yeah. So my mom was like, I suggest with the amount of viewers, somebody's going to buy this barbie. Absolutely. Somebody out there, I just, what's sad is that the sharks did not see mm -hmm. how seriously needed this product is, especially upon men Absolutely. with the ingrown hairs and breakouts and shaving irritations. Absolutely. So my mom was like, somebody's going to see it, baby. So then she said, well, you think $5,000 will help you? And I was like, yeah, I think $5,000 will help me. I get a little inventory. Uh, you make me about me about like a thousand units, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Give me a little cushion on the side. <laughs> We aired and I got 10,000 orders in four hours. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so that is the Shark Tank effect. Yeah. So how did you fulfill that? Like what happened? <laughs> Remember that friend I was telling you about? Yeah. I was like, yeah, come on over here. Yeah. Um, help me out. My mom, she came and helped. I mean, and we were in my apartment. I had a 992 square foot, two bedroom apartment. I had my mom, my father, my brother, my nephew, my niece, one of my um, dear friends I had, you know, had for a while. Um, he was there. My sister, for God's sake. We my, had the whole family. Yes. And my sister actually had, was in the beginning of MS. And she had just started to have symptoms of MS. So she couldn't do very much, but she was a box making girl for me. Thank you, Alpha. If you're watching this, God knows I love you for Appreciate that. You. She was <laughs> doing everything from the waist up, putting them boxes together. I mean, it was it was insane. Yeah. It was insane. Um, I had pallets of ingredients all in my living room. You couldn't walk anywhere. We were literally working 18 hour shifts. Goodness yeah, gracious. 18 hours just because my product is handcrafted. Yeah. It does not come from Hong Kong, Saigon or anywhere like that. It is American made. Um, I like to try to circulate that dollar here. And that touch is very close to me because when I graduated from college, I could not get a job. Yeah, and then when sure. I did get a job, yeah. then the market crashed. Yeah. I lost my job. So I always said, if I'm an entrepreneur and God ever blesses me to be successful, yeah. I'm going to do everything I can do to circulate the dollar on U.S. soil. Amen. Appreciate that. You got to remember the things you promised to God years before they happen, because when they happen, you still got to do those still things. Still got to do it. <laughs> and I still do that. He holds you accountable. Because I am very team, team USA. Amen. So, yeah. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So 10,000 orders. So now you've gotten the first initial order, the yes. wave, the Shark Tank effect. Now, years later, how is this still impacting your business? Um, woo. <laughs> it's never going. I don't think I ever get away from that. Yeah. I, I never forget someone. It, it hurt my feelings a little bit because one of my um, supposed close buddies said something to me like, oh, I'm so over it. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. And I was like, I'm not. Shout out, buddy. <laughs> and, and it's easy to say that when you're not in this predicament, yeah. when you hadn't put 12 whole years in. Yeah. It's really easy to feel that way. When you keep hearing Shark Tank, Shark Tank, Shark Tank, yeah. but apparently Shark Tank's not tired of me. We nice. re-air two to three times a month. Wow. Yeah. And uh, if I do zero advertising, zero marketing, my Sales brand is up. still going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So let's talk about that transition from that 992 square foot apartment to a 3,000 square foot warehouse. Mm -hmm. So how long was it from after that first 10,000 initial order to where you like, you know what? I can go expand now. Let me say, you want to know what my breaking point was? Oh, my mom thinks this is hilarious. Let's hear it. <laughs> and I told her to the postman that was coming to pick it. We were literally filling post, the post truck that, because USP, uh, USPS provides the cheapest shipping. Most people that have online businesses know that. Uh, you know, the service can be kind of, but still, I love my USPS. I, <laughs> we have an A1 account with them. Um, they were backing their truck up to my door. Oh. And my neighbors <laughs> knew I was on Shark Tank. Yeah. So people would stalk my house. Strangers, heck yeah. They stare all in my windows. Were you on Shark Tank? It was so <laughs> weird. Oh my God. Um, and then that's when I knew life had changed for me. Yeah. Life had changed. You gotta move. Because at that point I became a public figure. Absolutely. But it took two weeks from the fifth yeah. for me to get a lease signed for that space because I got tired of buying toilet paper. <laughs> Let me tell you, baby. I got listen. Have you ever had six people Wait, in your house 18 uh -huh. hours a day and uh -huh. Tristan's not ready? He don't want the truth today, y'all. No, I'm trying I'm, to tell I'm, you about that growth to get a spurt. Grasp, like I got. You sound like you said the bathroom 50, got no breaks. 50, 11 people in your house. 50, 11. No space to room. People knocking over. The breaking point 
was, was having to go buy some more shark. Listen, listen. Because then I my realized not gonna do this is not paper. this is not an industrial place. Right. This is my home, man. And uh I was like, I can't breathe. Uh, I'm I feel like I'm smothering because I couldn't separate work yeah. from that. And I was going days without sleep. I was going to sleep about every three days. Wow. Yeah. It took until April to get all the orders out. They wouldn't stop coming in. You have to remember that 10,000 orders, dear, was the first four hours. I aired at eight o'clock by midnight. One day. 10,000 <laughs> orders. Oh by the time I woke up the next day, we had went well over 150 grand in sales. I never seen that much money in my PayPal account at one time. Legit. Like it was like, this is some kind of a joke. What's the unlegit way to get the much money? You're I mean, paying? you know, yeah. hey, depending on who you have on the revenue clinic, you never know. <laughs> no, but seriously, y'all, it was it was tough. It was like it was the best and worst thing that could ever happen to someone because it was like uh, someone just said to me recently. She said, because um, I told her, I said, I think I'm suffering from PTSD mm -hmm. after all I've been through Wow. Um, because of the immediate shift yeah. and everything else that shifts with that. Nonstop. My financial shift. In comes everybody and their mom and daddy one piece. I mean, it just mm. friends change, relationships. Oh, honey, it just I went through so much and I ended up starting to back up and back away. Cause mm -hmm. I, I was like, I, I don't want to just be the girl that was on Shark Tank. Yeah. Because before Shark Tank, I was Lydia Evans, yeah. daughter of Ned and Joan Evans, yeah. graduate of University of Houston, God fearing child, God's oh, yeah. child. And you are now all of a sudden I'm I'm very introverted. Huh. Very introverted. Okay. Yeah. And then y'all making it worse for her. You have seen me at events. <laughs> yes, How is it? Hey, Tristan, hi. Yes, indeed. And, and I go about my business. <laughs> Everybody knows me. And, and, and y'all, if y'all have ever seen me at an event and I'm like that, don't take it personal. Yeah. Don't please don't say it is not personal at all. She, it's just she, my personality. She's not Shark Tank high side on y'all. She's no. just shy. <laughs> I, I really am. Unless and now if you come up to me and start talking about business, then I'm gonna illuminate like I am now. Yeah. But you know, you know, but it's different with Shark Tank because everyone wants to get into it. It's, it, it's a finance based business. Mm -hmm. So everyone wants to go straight into your finances. Absolutely. So it's like they know you're Tristan. Yeah. They know you're doing well. They know you're doing your thing, but they don't feel comfortable to come up and say, so how much did you make last year, Tristan? People do me like that all the time. And it is like, yeah. please stop asking me. That. Mind your business. <laughs> Mind your business. It's, it's, ooh. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. That. I can understand. Yeah. That. Mm. So what's your main way of marketing now? Oh, well, yeah. Well, we know not Facebook ads. <laughs> See, this is why you brought me on here so you can do this to me, y'all. Um, I marketing most of my marketing, I have an affiliate marketing program. Um, nice. that is we have tens of thousands of affiliates um that um actually help grow the brand through the word of mouth piece that comes with affiliate marketing. Okay. Um, plus I find that I don't have a product that just dances it way its way off the shelf hmm. because number one, it's an invention. Number two, no one else has done anything like that before. So there's nothing for you to really compare it to gotcha. for three. <clears throat> there's uh, aspects of it that need to be explained hmm. for four people want to reduce it to a $16 bar of soap, but it's really a tool more than it is anything else. Okay. So what I found is that people who've used the product are my best salespeople yeah. because they are ride or die yeah. for that bar. Yeah. And they're like, no, you got to try it. You got to use it. You don't understand. My customers are the kind of people that will say, I'm going to buy this for you mm -hmm. and give this to you so you can get hooked like me. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So in no way is my social media reflective of my client base. Gotcha. Because again, like I said, that day when I aired, I was not even um, social media ready because every ounce of my attention went to, oh my God, how am I going to come up with inventory for my airing next week? I couldn't think about Facebook. Yeah. I couldn't think about, I didn't even have Instagram downloaded on my phone. And you're still not that active on social media. Because mm -mm, I'm too busy working. <laughs> working a whole Fli business. Flipping the coin, baby. <laughs> Flipping, Flipping the, the coin. coin. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So, so what advice do you have to people that are oh, currently go coos. Go coos, yeah. Okay. No, Vanessa, Vanessa, I know Wade. Vanessa Wade, by the way. Yes, indeed. Hey Vanessa. Connected dots PR. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So what advice do you have to those people right now who are at a point in their business where I think I should get on Shark Tank, or even if it's not just Shark Tank? I need to take my business to the next level. What the advice do you have for all entrepreneurs? Absolutely. I that's one thing I'll tell you. 
I mean, it opens up doors that you can't beat down. Yeah. I am now a speaker with USPTO. So I go around on behalf of USPTO and speak to audiences of people because I'm one of very few black female inventors that are registered with USPTO. So tell, tell them what that is. USPTO. You, I'm sorry. I say it like <laughs> United States Patents and Trademarks Office. So um, I go around and I speak to people because they want to increase the African-American and minority submissions, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of ideas, yeah. but we don't know the proper steps to take to get those ideas legitimized um, and then protect them for ourselves and our generations that come behind us so that we can have that um, invention type that, that thing pop, on yeah, our resume. Thing, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I really love the fact that it's so um, inspiring. So Forbes magazine named me one of 12 African-Americans um, most inspiring to the next generation of African-American entrepreneurs. Wow. I think that that is worth, thank you, babe. I think that that is worth more um, than all the Shark Tank re-airs, um, the orders, it, it, the, the fact that I've made an indelible mark. Mm -hmm. um, Man, it, it, it's it's humbling. It's humbling, you I mean, know, for generations to come, for generations to come. And um, so, you know, I, I think that's an amazing thing. But of course, being on Shark Tank gave me that visibility. Absolutely. So absolutely. If you have a product or an invention. Yes, absolutely. You should. I wasn't patented when I first went on there. I didn't have the funds or the resources to do it. I say, that's a brave move. And it's extremely expensive. Yeah. Patents are not cheap. No. But check out La Monica Love if you do need a patent or a trademark. She's a previous guest. Yes. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I got some other ideas. I got to catch up with her. Yes, you did. Um, and so absolutely. I would definitely suggest that. Um, I just I kind of stuck my neck out there because I'm a risk taker. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you can't go through your entire life with caution about everything. Absolutely. Um, so I just kind of jumped out there. I was like, yeah, OK, if it does something it does because I've always had that in me that I knew I would be successful regardless. Gotcha. And yeah. Speaking of jumping out, did I see accurately that your products are also on Walmart? My pro my products are on walmart.com. I am not interested in my products being inside of Walmart because uh -huh. they steal too much. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> not you, not me when we got to go to Walmart, but let's just be honest here. Um, I'm not interested in that whatsoever um, because that sources back to you. Okay. And what people don't understand is the shrinkage. We're talking about shrinkage, right? The retail monster is something else. And mm -hmm. and I and I took some really great advice from Damon. And Damon said, if you have a product that is doing extremely well online, you are foolish to rush it into retail. Really? Because yes. Okay. Okay, so you want to give me you want me to give you an example Go real ahead, quick? Please, I got a minute. Okay. Please, please. So say for instance, you have a product that's ten dollars. Yeah. They're not going to want to buy that from you for over a dollar fifty, two dollars. <laughs> Your profit margin, um, if it costs you a dollar to make it, you may be making fifty cents per unit. But you're getting this beautiful thing that capitalists like to call volume. Huh. But for every one of those, you have to you have to sell a hundred of yours yeah. to make in profit margin what I make in one. Yeah. You're working harder. Not smarter, but there's a lot about retail that people don't understand. And I have to be completely honest with you. I did not understand mm -hmm. until being on Shark Tank makes you privy to a whole lot of information yeah. that you otherwise as an entrepreneur don't know on the other side of the table. I just knew I wanted to be in every store everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a cost to that. There's a huge cost to that. Um, and so Damon made it very clear that it's important. If you're doing phenomenal online, you will be foolish yeah. because now you're going to get more exposure and you'll be able to brag. Right. Everyone loves to brag. Their product is in this store, in that store, in this store. It's but about the bottom line. your average person has no idea how much revenue is slipping through your fingers. And that's why as soon as a product goes mainstream, mm -hmm. the quality goes to crap because there's no way in the world you they can, can still present you with that quality item that baited you in. Gosh. I know a lot of big brands, hair care. I think y'all know a few. We've seen it a million times. Mm -hmm. Skincare brands, beauty brands. Mm -hmm. The minute a large company buys them, mm -hmm. their products go to crap. So it's not always what it seems. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. so I know everybody's like, I just got to get on the shelf mm -hmm. somewhere. And I'm going to make it. Because mm -hmm. so they feel like that's making it. And yeah. for me, that never, that, and I get that question. When are you going to be inside of? 
when you go online and order it. So it's, it's, so it's my shipping like, is free. I eat the shipping fee for you, baby. Well, I make it easy on you. Well, why not? Why not? Just order it. So it's kind of like having a bunch of likes on Instagram and Facebook. It doesn't really mean anything just yep. from being in the store. What really matters is that bottom line. So mm -hmm. if you can sell direct to consumers through your website, save money with mm -hmm. expenses, packaging, all that good stuff. Keep that in mind as well. So. Yep. That was wow. one of the best tips I got from any. And I mean, he, this man is 350 million in mm. and he has a lot of brands that are strictly online that y'all don't know that he owns that they're strictly online brands. Really? Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't try to sell FUBU or anything until they were 40 million in. Wow. So, you understand what so, I mean? So he like, wasn't he was like, oh, yeah, quiet, because he knew the minute that he did that, he had three other partners, four people splitting that the cost of one T-shirt four ways. And you're going to drop that cost where your profit margin is two dollars so y'all getting 50 cents a shirt no. so really you're almost enslaved yeah to that because so, yeah. you start and then what are you going to do just pull your products no Can't you just keep that. pushing through you just have to keep pushing through keep pushing through and then keep getting capital yeah from loans lines of credit i don't want none of it's that right a, now it's a circle i don't want none of that right it's now circle. i don't want all that debt i'm so good watch, watch your debt yeah watch we're a 100 debt. debt free company so well, yeah answer that amen to that Shamir says, profit, profit, profit. Hey, Shamir. She's one of the best graphic artists in Houston. If y'all need, check her out. Put nice. website in there. And I've seen her name before somewhere. Mm -hmm. I might have met her at a networking event. Miss Jennifer uh, says, that's great advice. Appreciate you uh, chiming in. She's always a faithful Thanks, watcher. Jennifer. So as we wrap up, because we want to respect your time and everyone else's, what are like three key tips you want to give entrepreneurs right now? <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, never get too high with the highs. Okay. Never get too low with the lows. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep God first. All right. Don't let that scroll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Keep God first. Yep. And what else we got? And don't let the world make you hmm. into who you are. Break that down for yeah. me. Uh, going back to what I was saying about being on Shark Tank and then all of a sudden it was like I just was this shark tank personality right. and then it's like the only times my phone would ever ring was if it was about shark tank people gotcha. don't call me to say hey lydia how you doing gotcha. people don't call and check on me people don't call and say hey because they just in their mind feel like they know i'm good but they don't understand i'm just like every other woman every other human yeah. i'm made of flesh and blood and bones yeah and uh i'm not just a shark tank machine although i'm a tough businesswoman, um i think that it got to the point where it was like i just became the shark tank personality yeah. and I started to feel unfulfilled because I know that there's so much more. Thank so you. I am in the process of, you know, kind of tempering that <laughs> and, you know, um, transitioning into other things and, and other arts and stuff that I want to branch off into and gotcha. things of that sort. Good job. Good mm -hmm. job. Check on your strong friends. <laughs> and speaking of strong friends, CC says how about that? Oh, thank you, CC. <laughs> hey. Indeed. Indeed. So, we're going to wrap up. Tell us one unique thing that everybody doesn't know about you. One unique thing mm -hmm. that everybody doesn't know about me. Oh, my gosh. Let me see. <laughs> then that means they're going to know. Uh, let's see. Um, one unique thing. One unique thing that everybody doesn't know about me. Well, no, I would say my Yorkie runs my life, but I think people on Instagram know that. And Facebook, they're like, that girl posts more of a dog than anything. Um, I'm adopting. You're adopting. Yes. That's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. So that, that baby can rule my life now. Well, not right just my there. Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being on the show. If you Oh, are, thank you, LaCris. Oh, oh see, right, right, I'm right. sorry. The comments is all okay. sucky. Sorry. Chris Smith says I use I use your bar when I have to shave and I am hooked. Oh, so, thank you, LaCris. Did you bring one for me in your purse? I should have, huh? <laughs> I should have gave you one at the bottom with the peppermint stuck to it. You know what I mean? Church That's church it. <laughs> all right. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, if you would like to learn more about um, Lydia Evans and Swag Essentials, you can go to our website, the streaming down low, pure slash swag dot com. Mm -hmm. um, definitely want you all to support her. Get, place a 10,000 um, unit order for her That's so it. she can have That's a great I mean. weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and send her uh, light day. an Amazon Prime or some toilet paper. <laughs> oh, no. and I am on Amazon Prime. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So also, if you would like to learn more about 
how to take your business to the next level, cure your revenue ailments. Check us out in the Revenue Clinic. Let's go to that link. It's a free Facebook group where we have our other previous episodes and resources to help you cure your revenue ailments and take your business to the next level. So be sure to follow uh, our page and we thank you for tuning in with us. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and share this video and tag a friend who can use this inspirational please, message. So thank you please. all for tuning in and we will see you next Thursday. We have Mr. Brandon Gibson. He's going to be talking about how to open your own Chick-fil-A franchise. Ooh, Ooh yeah. My mom needs yeah. to be listening to exactly. that. Exactly. Hopefully bring some uh, Polynesian sauce and some chicken, chicken nuggets. <laughs> nuggets and surprise, no salt. No salt. No a little salt. heavy on the salt. <laughs> all right, y'all have a blessing. Thank you.